Hi, I'm not going to do an intro, I'm just going to get right into it. Uh, I'm going to share my origin story. So, your girl has always suffered from self-esteem issues. And I've always been insecure about my body. I'm sure some can relate. Uh, learning to love and accept myself has been super hard and a journey that I'm still on. If there was a magic pill that could give me that, I would take it in a heartbeat. Well, as long as uh, it didn't interact with my seizure meds. Um, I think I want to do a story time for this video um, to kind of get a feel for who I am and how this all started for me. Um, as a little kid, once upon a time, I thought about things um, I thought about things about my appearance. For example, I didn't know I was Mexican until a girl asked me in fourth grade. And I had no idea. I, I ne It never dawned me on me to care. I was a skinny kid for a while. I ate whatever I wanted and as much as I wanted. It wasn't until fifth grade when the early bloomers started to pop up in class. And that right there is when I started to uh, start looking at myself. I'm realizing this is coming for me too. And middle school was when it started for me. Those hormones were not kind to me either. It seemed like my metabolism didn't keep up with the times. Things started to started filling out and it was largely in my waist, my waistband, if you know what I mean. It wasn't until high school when it really popped out like here comes Johnny. Around that nerve wracking time when back to school shopping starts and you start getting a whole new wardrobe. And it was scary to me, but it was cool for me because my mom was up with the trends at the time. I knew she'd help me figure out what to wear because your girl was a, re a real dork out here in these streets. Uh, I bumped up a couple of jean sizes, which had its perks, but mostly made me feel awkward. And like I said, I needed my mommy's help. A couple months into the school year, I find myself up another jean size, but no jeans to replace the ones I grew out of. I ended up having to wear sweatpants like three times a week. That did something serious to my psyche. Start sitting around here comparing yourself to the people around you. So I had to figure out something quick. Growing up, my mom was an aerobics queen and those step classes just jumping around competing with all the other ladies in there. I remember after my brother was born, she snapped back so fast and that was because she always worked out. So jumping back to me, mind you, I couldn't drive. I was always babysitting my brothers while my parents worked. It left me no opportunity for sports or any other activities, just straight off the bus to snacks and after school television programming. All right, I'm gonna set the tone. At this point, I'm at my wits end. I'm embarrassed and uncomfortable in my clothes. The only option I could think of uh, was running around my neighborhood, but I didn't want anyone from school or strangers to see me running. Um, it was still that time of the year when the sun didn't go down until 7 p.m. It was good and dark at that time, so I took advantage of that the situation. I put some sneakers on, some basketball shorts, big tee, and ran like nobody was watching. I will never forget that night. I got to the end of the cul-de-sac and realized how much harder it was going to be. My goal was to get to the next stop sign, down the street and back. Couldn't have been more than a quarter of a mile. I couldn't run all. I couldn't run all the way back. It was hilarious looking back. 
looking back at that time I was 14 and I couldn't even run down the street on my way back I was like shit I really thought this was gonna be child's play but it, it also felt really good I had a goal to work towards a new purpose in my little life of teenage angst I went back out there every night until I ran the whole neighborhood nonstop. The neighborhood wasn't even that big at all. But by the second month, I was able to lap the entire neighborhood twice. And that was when I started losing noticeable weight. I fit back into my clothes and during that period of time, the high felt so good. I just kept going back out there. And back when and back then uh, there was disc mans for portable music i would just hold it in my hand while i ran to that to get that extra ump unfortunately as far as weight goes i would yo-yo i couldn't control what food i ate while i was in high school i was a binge eater there were times i would just eat so uncontrollably and would feel so ashamed it came down to not wanting to eat the next day, but I would just eat my emotions again. It was an ugly cycle I couldn't get out of. Like in Austin Powers, when Fat Bastard said that, I mean, was that his name? Um, anyways, I eat because I'm fat and I'm fat because I eat. It just, I could, I always thought about that. And then the It Girls back then was like Kate Moss, Victoria's Secret Angels, Britney Spears, Christina Aguilera, and on one other end, uh, on one end of the other end of the spectrum, <laughs> there was video vixens of the times: Karen Steffens, the Melissa Fords, um, I forget the other girl, etc. This may be triggering for some, but I was torn between wanting a curvy figure, figure and just going for a skinny, the skinny look. I would look at Anamia sites, which before MySpace and Facebook, there were websites and magazines. Um, the sites, those sites gave tips on disordered eating and how to hide it. For me, it was like looking at Rotten.com. It was a, they were shock sites. I peaked, it piqued my interest, but I just didn't have the self-control to do what those ladies could do. I hated throwing up, so that was completely out of the question, and I didn't have the willpower to starve. The only option next after that was to exercise. So I joined the long distance track team. I didn't care about racing or winning. I just wanted the challenge, you know, the workout. I remember doing, I remember at track meets, I would do all of the events and I did okay in the relay events, but coming in, but for everything else, I would come in last. I didn't care. I really didn't care who was looking those people in the stands weren't anybody i knew or cared about and they didn't care about me they they i was just another person i was um okay being alone in this no one really was there to you know like watch me in the stands it was just an organized workout like my mom's aerobic classes when we practiced it took a long time before i started to keep up you know with all the other the, my teammates again I didn't care this was solely for me and how it felt for me it was just a new goal for me to reach and if I didn't reach it I, I didn't care it was just what I felt what I like to do but life happened and I got in trouble my senior year so I had to drop out of track and but at my peak I was I was in the best shape of my life I had and I had to get a job so completely stopped doing exercise it wasn't until I enlisted in the army at 20 years old that's where I had to pick it back up 
it just wasn't an option to not do physical activity. The whole eight weeks was nothing but running around in circles to the pits of hell and back. I fell off the wagon when I uh, got out of boot camp. As soon as AIT came, I just tried to maintain my PT test. When I was called up to go to Iraq, that was where I picked up picked running up again. After I returned from Iraq uh, was when I started drinking a lot and back to my bad eating habits. Well, I still was eating really bad in Iraq too. Overall, while I was overseas, I would run six miles on the treadmill, treadmill almost every night. But the saying about not being able to outrun a bad diet rings so true. I also started lifting, but I never reached my goals because I just couldn't get in, get my diet right. I'll end it here. That's my origin story. Throughout time, that's been the trend um, throughout my life. Work, work out a lot, continue to eat bad, and then fall off again. I've been thinking about my purpose in this channel I've made. I'm not sure over time, uh, but I'll figure it out. The fitness industry and YouTube channels are just so saturated with lies and depression or <laughs> deception. It breeds insecurities for both men and women. And I know it has made me feel hopeless time and time again. I'm just trying to be the best I can be making fitness and working out about wellness and feeling good. I want to thank you so much if you stayed till the end of this video, uh, putting up with my <laughs> stuttering and uh, this is a hard topic to talk about and um, I'm glad I made it through my script. <laughs> it was really awkward, but please consider subscribing and stay motivated my friends.